Hi, welcome back to the Sea Morning Show. Now we will talk about Ramadan in Argentina, and now it is how it is celebrated there. We are connected with the Indonesian ambassador to Argentina, Her Excellency Ibu Ninik Kun Nariati. Good morning, Ibu. What time is it in Argentina? Good morning. Now it's 9 p.m. in the evening. Whoa. Oh, the good evening. Good evening. So you just oh, wrapped yes. up iftar and all the, uh, maybe you did your personal tarawih sessions and everything. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, done already. Thank you. Oh, well, thank you so much for joining us here on See the Morning Show. But before we talk about Ramadan in Argentina, I know you must miss Indonesia so much. You probably are really going to be really, really good at this because we have a little quiz for you. That's it's right. called the I Love Indonesia quiz. Oh. So we need you to answer all of our questions from Indonesia. Are you ready? Ready, Ivo? Okay. Okay. All right. You start. Yes. Okay. So we got we got a list of questions, right? As as Kai mentioned, so the first question is, what is Magalang's landmark? Oh, so it's a huge landmark there, uh, yeah. uh, Borobudur. Yeah, that's, right. that's right, people. All that's right. so good. Oh, this is one I personally love. Who was the most iconic female Muslim hero hailing from Aceh in Indonesia? Heroine, not hero. <laughs> Um, as far as I know, is there are two. Yeah. Okay. Chut Nyadin and Chut Putia. Yes. That's right. Wow. Chut right. Nyadin was definitely the answer. So you got you got two points so far, Ibu. Let's let's make it five out of five. Good. Um, what is the name of the airport Ooh. in Medan? I love this one. In Medan? Yes. yes. Oh wait. Uh, the recent issue is coming from Medan uh, Airport. It's Kuala Namu. That's oh, right. Oh, all she right. knows her Indonesia. Kuala Namu. Kuala Namu. Uh, this is one of, our absolute, um, one of my absolute favorite places in the world. It's got great tourism, great food. food. What is the capital of North Sulawesi? Oh, Manado. Manado. Yeah, that's right. Wow. Manado. Right. Walk in the park for you. Look at that. I mean, if you're at home looking yeah. at what's what's um, on the right of our screen, it's so beautiful. All right, um, last one. Who is the hero or, that is celebrated by being printed on the 100,000 banknotes? Mm -hmm. um, it's a duet. Yeah. On the 100,000? It's been a while, probably. Yes, yes, that's, that's right. right. Evil. She nailed it. You got five you out of five. five. That's right. You nailed all five questions. Thank you so much. All right. You know, um, it's, it's such a pleasure to have you here on our Sea Morning Show because we know the time difference sometimes is very difficult, but we love to share stories from around the world. And how is Ramadan currently in Argentina amid uh, the ongoing pandemic? I and mean, we just talked about the latest COVID-19 updates. Uh, and we've also been looking at Latin America and sharing their stories. How is it really as somebody who's really there in Argentina? Well, as you know very well that Argentina is uh, uh, predominantly is Christian uh, society. So we didn't feel uh, Ramadan like we used to have it in Indonesia, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, especially during pandemic time, where the government imposed uh, many restrictions to us mm -hmm. with the lockdown, with the uh, uh, banning uh, us from uh, 8 in the evening until in the morning and uh, not allow us to gather in a close uh, room for praying more than 10 people so it's quite uh, difficult for us but before Ramadan we used to have a more uh, uh, beautiful Ramadan in Buenos Aires mm. as you can see here we, we can still have uh, uh, Taraweh in the mosque we can even have a, a iftar together in the mosque and also uh, uh, what you call it in Indonesia uh, Together we have iftar uh, from house to house. Mm. Yeah. But during the pandemic, of course, this cannot be done anymore. We have to find uh, a new ways to to celebrate Ramadan and uh, lift up our, our spirit to to make Ramadan meaningful for us. 
uh, yesterday we can have like uh, open house for many Indonesian who live in Argentina. Mm -hmm. And also we can uh, invite uh, my colleagues uh, from diplomatic course to mm. come and celebrate uh, end of Ramadan to my residents. Uh, and also uh, uh, what we call it, people come and celebrate together from all walk of people. Because in Argentina, in Indonesia are not so many, mm -hmm. uh, only around 200 people in Argentina and almost half of them are family of the embassy staff and half are uh, Indonesian citizens who work in Argentina as uh, missionaries for a Catholic Church here. So you can find easily in Argentina Indonesian nun and Indonesian pastor mm. who work uh, at the many churches in, in remote area in Argentina. So during Ramadan, we gather together, uh, not Ramadan, I mean at end of Ramadan, mm -hmm. Idol Fitri, we can gather together and uh, celebrate uh, uh, Idol Fitri and have some Indonesian delicacy. Oh. This is uh, what we have during Ramadan before pandemic. But after pandemic, of course, we cannot do it anymore. Yeah. So, Ibu, um, as you mentioned earlier, what we saw just now, you know, you said um, there are strict restrictions on, you know, people gathering probably for uh, prayers and, and gather around for, to break their fast. But uh, is there a limit to gathering crowds in, probably in the mosque or, or for the Muslim community when they open up their fast? Well, actually, the government imposed many restrictions uh, gradually. Mm. When the total lockdown was imposed, uh, we are not allowed to to even gather in large group. You know, we cannot go to the mosque to pray, uh, uh, jamaah, things like that. Mm -hmm. But when it uh, relaxed a little bit, we can go again to the mosque and pray Jumat prayer in 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 the mosque. But with the recent uh, development of uh, uh, positive uh, uh, cases in Argentina being raised, increased, the government again imposed a total lockdown in uh, in Argentina. Yeah. So they uh, uh, impose uh, only 10 people allowed to gather in the house for mm -hmm. social gathering, mm -hmm. but all social and religious activities are prohibited I see. up till now so unfortunately this is the situation that we face during Ramadan so um, I know that you know as a oh, child um, who grew up in the know, diplomatic scene up. I know it's always something so special to spend you know Ido Fitri in embassies with the food and everything it's one thing we all miss we must miss but you mentioned before about innovative ways to spend Ramadan because you cannot see each other I saw in the video that there were virtu virtual Salat Eats happening so what are your plans for this Ido Fitri um, uh, innovation, innov to, to you know, this innovative plans or different ways to celebrate Eid al this year because you're not allowed together. Yeah, actually, since last year we did a virtual Eid uh, 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 al celebration. We we uh, we pray in the morning and then it was broadcasted uh, through Zoom mm -hmm. and then so people, Indonesian uh, citizen who live uh, in remote area in Argentina and also in other countries that also my accreditation like Paraguay and Uruguay, mm -hmm. they can follow the celebration uh, from their own houses. Mm -hmm. Even one Indonesian citizen who uh, live for maybe uh, more than 20 years in Paraguay, she cried a lot because uh, this is the first time that she uh, can participate the celebration of Eid al-Fitri, even though it's still virtually. Yeah. Because she lives uh, with mm. her family in Paraguay, and uh, for quite some time, we didn't have a, a chance to visit uh, Indonesia. So this is a, a things that we're going to do it again this mm -hmm. year uh, uh, amid the pandemic. Because uh, this is the only thing we can do and offer for, for people. Uh, uh, beside the uh, uh, prayer in the morning, we're going to also have like uh, Silaturahim, yeah. uh, meeting with Indonesian uh, uh, 
society in Paraguay, Uruguay, and Argentina through uh, Zoom. Yeah. Uh, then we can, uh, you know, have virtually and say <laughs> our prayers and say, uh, request their uh, forgiveness for our sin, maybe. Yeah. And then uh, again, like last year, uh, we go uh, give away hampers, Lebaran hampers oh. to Indonesian citizen, oh. Indonesian family here. Wow. We know how important community so, it is, is to ours. Definitely, yeah. And then as Kai said, um, I think embassies usually have events or, or gatherings. I remember, I think, um, when I was in the UK having eat there, it was, it was such a moment to hang out with other Indonesians. And I think um, it would usually be like that. But in this case, coming up, Eid is just in a couple of days. Um, what are the events that are um, being planned probably for um, Argentina itself or the embassy out there? Are there specific events or are you having everything online? Well, uh, this year, uh, in the couple of days, we are not going only to have a virtual uh, uh, morning prayer mm -hmm. and also uh, Silaturahim uh, uh, virtually. But we're going to have a hybrid silaturahim. Mm. What I mean by hybrid is, you know, we arrange uh, uh, Indonesian citizen who would like to come and visit me at the residence uh, in turn. So we allocate certain time, like 10 or 15 minutes for each family to come and have celebration together with us here at the residence. This, uh, by doing this, at least we are not breaking the, the rules, mm -hmm. but we still have a chance to meet each other uh, uh, face by face. So by doing this, I hope uh, giving opportunity for Indonesian citizen to, uh, uh, well, to dress nicely, mm -hmm. because maybe during pandemic they forget to dress up. <laughs> so it is time. Yeah. Uh, for them, I give them opportunity to dress up, even though it's only 10 or 15 minutes. I think it's uh, it's a good, it's a good opportunity. But Ibu, I think this is a great, great initiative because not everybody gets to have intimate and alone time with yeah. the ambassador from Indonesia. So <laughs> uh, I think this is also perhaps for you, to, great for you to be able to reach out to your. Uh, to the citizens of Indonesia there. I have to commend you for that because that is definitely taking a lot of time from you as yes. well. But for me, the question is now, um, because since you were there in Argentina uh, and you've mentioned that currently the government has in place strict lockdown again due to the rise of numbers, I just wanted to ask, um, how are the vaccine updates that you've already heard or is being, uh, is being rolled out here in Argentina? Is it happening right now slowly or are they still waiting for vaccinations to arrive? Well, actually, vaccination has begun uh, since maybe two months ago in Argentina. But uh, the government uh, has already a plan to vaccinate only essential people first. Mm. And they have a criteria for that. First is, of course, like in Indonesia, is health and social care personnel, senior people, but they have it gradually from above 80 and then above 75 and above 65 and then above 60. So not all together above 60. Mm. And then people age 18 until 59, but with comorbid. So this is maybe different from us. Yeah? So people with range of age, they have a, uh, they will be a, a prioritized to get uh, vaccinated because they have comorbid. And also other strategic people like, of course, army, police, teacher, and uh, any other uh, personnel that need to be uh, at the forefront in the, uh, combating the, the virus. So yes, vaccination already in Argentina, but not as fast as they, they would like to have because the the vaccine itself is still uh, not available in a large uh, capacity. They purchase vaccine from uh, Russia, mm -hmm. Sputnik. Yep. They also purchase vaccine from China, Sinopharm. And they are trying to have a cooperation in uh, uh, developing vaccine in Argentina 
uh, through cooperation with a Chinese uh, uh, company and also seeking a uh, possibility to have a cooperation with uh, uh, Cuba mm. to develop the scene. Yeah. So this is how, and then uh, out of 44 million population in Argentina, around nine people have been vaccinated. This is good, but only 1.3 million have received full dose. Mm. So this is slightly different from Indonesia. In Indonesia, when you are vaccinated, uh, you're going to be vaccin uh, vaccinated two times, Twice, yeah. complete. Here is only one time because the, 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 the vaccine itself will be used for larger community. So more people will be able to have first dose of vaccine. That's the policy of the government mm -hmm. right now. Okay. All right. All right. So, uh, right. it's good. Yeah, yeah, that's good news, Ibu. Um, but I assume with you going out and about giving hampers to people, you've been vaccinated because you have to go out and and um, run around and, and deal with lots of people, right? Um, but with, uh, with other Indonesians in Argentina, um, have they been vaccinated or what's the what are the ways for them to get vaccinated if they haven't? Well, actually, the good thing is uh, uh, government has not restricted uh, foreigners to be vaccinated in Argentina mm -hmm. as long as you are resident here. So when they are meet the cr criteria imposed by the government, mm -hmm. meaning that uh, 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 you meet the cr criteria if you are above 60 years or 65 years according to the rules, mm -hmm. then you can just apply. For instance, like me, I just recently uh, uh, applied to be vaccinated because I'm above 60 right now. Yeah. But when the, the government only allow above 80, I, ha I have to wait until my turn come up. Yeah. Yeah. That's also happened for other Indonesian who live in Argentina. Younger generation, they have to wait until the vaccine is available in Argentina. Huh. But what? there are some Indonesian, as I mentioned before, mm -hmm. uh, who work for the uh, churches. They are at the front, uh, front front uh, to combating this uh, virus. So they are already being mm -hmm. vaccinated. So those are so the, this is a good news. Also. The priority groups and healthcare workers. Okay, I just have one more question yeah. for you, just out of curiosity, because you know that Indonesia has been one of the countries that has, uh, you know, that has quite a success story in you know acquiring lots and lots of vaccinations early and you being a representative there in argentina has there ever been a dialogue between you know government to government perhaps they're asking for tips how indonesia managed the infrastructure of it and anything or perhaps you just you know telling them oh this is possible yeah actually just uh, uh like three weeks ago mm -hmm. i met uh, i have a meeting with the foreign minister of argentina mm -hmm. And uh, we discuss many things, and among other is uh, how to 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 help Argentina uh, uh, required uh, who required a lot of uh, uh, medical equipment. Yeah. So we can we offer them our product uh, to fulfill the demand from the uh, health sector of Argentina. But here again, you know, uh, uh, we in progress. We are trying to to set up a meeting between the exporter and importing mm -hmm. of the health uh, medical equipment from Indonesia and Argentina. So it's uh, being in progress, actually. Well, that's some great okay. news. Ibunini, thank you so much for being with us this morning, and I hope you stay safe and will get your vaccinations as soon as possible. Definitely. Ibu, <laughs> enjoy your night. Uh, have some rest. We know it's going to be late there, so thank you for spending uh, the time with thank us. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so much, Ibu. Take care. All right. Thank you for having me.